Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today, we have Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. Good morning, Dr. Paul. How are you today? Are you set to go? Yes. Okay, let's I start. Hope so. Let's start. <laughs> let's start the show. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about an issue that we haven't talked very much about, except it might be the one that we've talked the most about yeah. in the last several years, and it has to do with uh, COVID vaccinations. And there's a lot of criminality involved in this over the years, and a lot of suffering that has occurred that has not uh, been reconciled yet. But it looks like uh, Kansas, the city of Kansas. Uh, the state, yeah. Uh, is unhappy with uh, Pfizer. Yeah. And they, the article that came out from Hill and the research, Kansas City uh, State sues Pfizer over misleading statements. Can you believe that? Uh -huh. uh, that's my words. About COVID vaccine. And, you know, when I read this, I thought, why, why did they make it so soft? Uh, if you're if you're filing something, misleading is such a. Yeah. I mean, people make mis little minor mistakes and mislead people, and and they might have subtle reasons for doing it. But uh, I think they flat out lied. Yeah. <laughs> and that should be a crime, you know, misleading, fraud, and contempt, and the the whole work. But anyway, they they filed the suit, and who knows what's going to happen. There's been other people you know, filing suits and winning some victories. But I uh, have this terrible negative feeling that the people who have suffered, the many people who have suffered are not <coughs> going to be compensated. No, no. Uh, because they're, they're, they're going to be unknown. And, you know, and, and even even the ringleader, I think his name is Fauci or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. Dr. Fauci, he's the ringleader, and he is still honored and respected on national television. Of course, yeah. So uh, most people, though, have uh, less respect for him now than before, and uh, some physicians got really annoyed with him because he had never seen a patient in his yeah. life, yeah, <laughs> some no people report, reported. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is uh, I think, good that it's happening. But uh, it's it's a uh, it's a tragedy, but it exposes once again that we talked about the pharmaceutical industrial complex, and, and they've been they've been able to coordinate with media, university professors, drug other drug companies, all you know, chanting that to the point where the Justice Department was evil <coughs> in being able to put doctors and others in prison and yeah. lose their jobs and they get away with that cancellation. That was far and above a little uh, uh, intellectual discussion that's gone on. And now we're going to straighten out. Well, a few people made some misleading <coughs> statements. Yeah. We'll, we'll straighten that out. But uh, we still have some, some more straightening out to do because I saw something today that be prepared. There is a flu, uh, a, a flu epidemic coming down. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, shots. So... Uh, they're always prepared, and it's been around for a long time, but at least some truth is coming out. I hope That's what my main hope is, that when they have a suit like this, that uh, it, if there's f some real evil done, that there is some comp compensation, but uh, that truth is registered, and maybe, maybe we'll wake up, and maybe they'll look at the basic flaw in that uh, when you get into something as delicate as medicine and government, it should be as delicate as government and religion, and you should keep the two separated. Yeah, now you start out, you make a good point about how they use the word misleading rather than lying. Uh, and I think the reason is because this is The Hill, and The Hill, like all of the other mainstream publications at the time, they said the same things. They said the same misleading statements. They went along with the narrative. They pushed the narrative. They demanded that you follow the narrative. So they're all complicit in this big lie. So if they say anything stronger than misleading, then they themselves are going to be subject to scrutiny. So that's why they're trying to soft pedal this. But nevertheless, <laughs> put this first clip up. This is from The Hill. Uh, and this is Kansas sues Pfizer over misleading statements, as you say, about COVID vaccine. Go to the next one. Uh, the state of Kansas filed a lawsuit Monday against pharmaceutical company Pfizer, alleging the company made misleading claims. The suit filed by Kansas Attorney General Chris Kobach, the District Counsel of Thomas County, claims P Pfizer misled Kansas residents uh, when it claimed it was safe enough and allegedly hid the evidence. This is the part. 
hid the evidence of the shots linked to myocarditis in pregnancy issues. Uh, let's listen to Chris. Interestingly enough, I know Chris fairly well. We were together in Switzerland as American Swiss Foundation Young Leaders quite a few years ago, so it's nice to see him doing some good work. Let's listen to that first, a minute 28. It's a longer clip than I usually play, but I want to get both aspects of uh, two of the three things, at least, of what, what, he's, what he's talking about here. So let's listen to Pfizer one marketed its vaccine as safe for pregnant women. However, in February of 2021, Pfizer possessed reports for 458 pregnant women who received Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine during pregnancy. More than half of the pregnant women reported an, ad an adverse event, and more than 10% reported a miscarriage, many within days of the vaccination. Pfizer also possessed information from its own October 2020 study on pregnancy in rats, indicating that its COVID-19 vaccine was likely linked to infertility, loss of litters, and stillborn offspring. Number two, safety relating to heart conditions like myocarditis. Fire, Pfizer consistently denied any evidence of a connection or safety signal between its COVID-19 vaccine and myocarditis or pericarditis. Indeed, on January 18th, 2023, when asked whether its vaccine caused strokes or myocarditis, Pfizer chairman and CEO Alan Burla stated, quote, we've not seen a, sig a single signal, although we have distributed billions of doses, end quote. A signal that he was referring to as a safety signal, which refers to a negative consequence. However, as Pfizer knew, the United States government, the United States military, foreign governments, and others had found that Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine caused myocarditis and pericarditis. Number three, effectiveness we can regarding var variants. Yeah, I mean, we could go on, but that's a longer clip than we usually do. The, the point that he's making is that they had the data at the time, and they flat out lied. That's how Chris puts it. Those yeah. seem like high percentages of problems, doesn't it? You know, he brought up the subject of pregnancy, yeah. which is something else. I, I re recall going, starting medical school as being, looking at the professors yeah. as giants, and they compared to what I knew about medicine, they were gigantic. Yeah, yeah. And I think they were, the medicine was a little bit more honorable back, back in just a few, several, you know, several decades ago. But, uh, and, and, and we, we really looked up to the professors. And, uh, but in re as the time went on, I became more questioning of what was going on. And I, I, I drifted toward this, you know, if a woman comes in and she's early pregnant, I, it was just avoid anything that you have a question about. Yeah. Don't try to ask a question. And I talked to other physicians about being stricter, and they would say, well, the FDA approved this. You know, something said, it's okay with pregnancy, and they weren't told not to do it. And I, I said, but I, you know, went in that direction and just used the common sense of, you know, if you don't have to take this medication or there's so many things, they couldn't possibly have tested every medication that's been available. So I thought, you know, common sense, but that's not what happens here. Here, and, and, I, and I was disappointed, he, you know, even during, during this epidemic uh, uh, with the medical profession because they were the major participants. They yeah. gave a credibility. Right. <clears throat> they were the, the big liars. And uh, if you if you uh, stood up for telling the truth and protecting your patients and doing these things, uh, you you might lose your my you lost your license could yeah. lose your license and, and this was very serious. That was that is so disappointing. But you know sometimes basic overall rules of non-aggression and uh, who's responsible for safety. And, you know these basic principles avoid so much of this. And they say yeah, but you might you might miss out. So so we always, we, we don't want to miss out the opportunity to have Dr. Fauci giving us yeah. advice and, and they let him give the advice. Yeah. And that's why when government takes over, you know, it's magnified. That doesn't mean that there, there's been times they probably say, yeah, but what about when Dr. So-and-so did this and saved a lot of lives? But uh, that, that's a, there, there's no reason they don't cancel it out, but they, they don't also get the government dictating and, and 
he's conspiring too so strong a word. Yeah, no, no, I not mean, hardly. See, getting together, and they, they, they have a scenario that they pushed, and there was a lot of money involved. Money was a greater motivation than health. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's almost like we're a failed society. If a company can get away with doing this, <laughs> when they knew, I mean, the 10%, now we don't know that every one of those 10% was directly related to the shot, but I mean, if that something like that came that's up in the percent. rate, isn't that's a high, like 10% miscarriage. That's just crazy. Well, here are the four things that he is suing them over. We only covered two in that video for the sake of time, but put up this next clip. Uh, go forward. Go forward. One. Here we go. So here are the four issues, Dr. Paul, that, that Chris uh, Kobach is bringing up. Safety related to pregnant women. Heart problems or related issues. We covered those. Lying regarding vaccine efficacy. That's a big one. And colluding to censor questions about the vaccine. Very, very important things. Now, um, our own uh, Ken Paxton, our own uh, attorney general here in Texas, he filed suit late, late last year in a similar way. I would just say, I hope this opens the floodgates of state lawsuits against this. I mean, I think that's the only way we can get justice. And uh, maybe that'll make him a little more cautious. I don't know whether it'll make him more honest. Yeah. <laughs> But you, you know who I think is, this poses a problem for is President Trump. Because remember, my beautiful vaccines, my beautiful vaccines, as this continues to progress, he's looking more and more foolish. If I were advising Trump, and unfortunately we're not, I would say, wow, this new information is incredible. They must have been keeping these things from me. Those scoundrels, they should all be jailed. I'm the innocent one. Something like this, you know, he needs to distance himself, I think. You know, I, when I think about how medicine is practiced, once uh, you know the majority takes over through votes and putting politicians in charge and passing out grants and uh, you, you know for research, but uh, I think I think it is uh, symbolic of and represents a, a, a democracy. Yeah. You know, the collective gets together and say, well. You know, uh, the Congress voted for it. Yeah. You know, the collective came together. And, you know, you know, you know I'm a very much annoyed by the sanctity that they give uh, pure democracy. Yeah. I think it's very, very dangerous. The founders convinced me of that. Very dangerous. So they get together and, uh, and you, you know, and then they, get, then they get a speaker for this collective approach to medicine. And they put him out on television and he gets a pay raise. And, yeah. Uh, but it's a good thing we have bipartisanship. I mean, bipartisan, two-party. Oh, you mean they both agreed? Yeah. They both, both, both sides were agreeing with it, almost all of them. So it's, it's a shame. So. Yeah. Well, we'll keep an eye on it and we'll report on it because, I mean, I hope it's <laughs> successful. And I hope these guys go down. They deserve it for all the lives they've ruined. The second story we're going to cover today is kind of tangentially related to COVID because it's one of the leading actors in the tragedy uh, it's worse than a tragedy. If you could put that next clip on. Remember this guy, Surgeon General Vivek Murthy. Uh, he now, he's back. He was hiding for a while, uh, but he's back. And guess what, Dr. Paul? He wants to have more censorship. So this is from Politico. Surgeon General Murthy wants social media warning labels. Try telling that to Congress. Of course, Politico loves the idea of censorship and uh, warning labels. That's why it has that kind of tone. And in fact, the next clip says a push by Murthy to slap tobacco style warning labels on social media has galvanized supporters on Monday. Yeah, right. Everyone's scrambling for yeah, it. Yeah, but how, how would the people be protected? And this is representing the majority opinion. <laughs> you know, they get together and, and they want protection from the government. Yeah. And, uh, the labeling is all. And they say, yeah, well, we put it on alcohol. Yeah. But alcohol is still a, a greater killer on some articles, greater killer than fentanyl. Yeah. Fentanyl. yeah. So so th this the labeling and, and there's nothing that says that labeling couldn't occur yeah. without the government deciding what and when and how things should be labeled and people, you know, made to be safe. Uh, so that that is just a, a gimmick for control. control. Yeah, yeah. They're obsessed with it. And and the dis uh, the disbelief that individuals, you know, an independent doctor that 
practice holistic type medicine and a lot of common sense and knew the history uh, is, is not to be accepted. How could he know that? How could he challenge the FDA and these billions of dollars of research that we have and all the universities supporting this position? You know, and that's, that's, that's a real problem. They, they, they like it to have the majority opinion be behind them and uh, then they march on and then they know how to manipulate the, uh, uh, the, the bureaucracy as well as the media. The media has to come in and, uh, you know, that, that uh, rant on on why you had to have that, those vaccines that was the media uh, you know yeah. coordinated that as well, much as anybody and in this case it's social media you know that he wants to slap labels on social media to prevent kids i guess from accessing it because it makes them depressed well it makes everyone depressed but anyway it's it's usurping the role of the parents it's the parent to say hey you can't have an account on instagram you're too young uh, you know, you can put that thing down. You can't have a phone. No, you can't do that. Stay offline. Go outside. But it's the government uh, in the in the person of the, of this guy and so many others. They want to take over the role of the parents. Well, you know, you know, the um, the the, uh, the p people, you know, there's this argument between tr truth and uh, people who lie. And there's there's a contest going on. It's been going on for a few years. And uh, so if we decide we want truth and a majority does vote for truth, the question is, well, who's going to define it? Yeah. The, the who's going to be the finer arbiter of what, what truth is? And uh, they will start labeling of things or doing anything. Then it's social media, too. Yeah. And, and how can they not be involved in uh, they've essentially by through the back door, they have took, taken over, you know, the control of the news system, yeah. you know, and uh, that that is uh, th that it has this does not solve the problem because the people are still pondering, you know, who is going to tell the truth, and they they think NIH they'll take care of yeah. World Health Organization. These are smart people. Yeah. And they'll they'll tell us the truth, so we will we will label it. Yeah. So the, they 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 want to label because they want to warn us of the danger, uh, and maybe one out of a hundred, they're correct in doing it, but, but they're assuming that if you don't have the government doing that, nobody will warn us. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there would be a different source of our warnings that is more trustworthy. Just think of tr trust in a university degree. I was seeing yeah. something I was on that too. Well, that was uh, Jonathan Turley wrote about that, yeah. yeah. But the, the, the people have lost lost yeah. confidence in it, and yet, uh, and the parents are getting poorer. And parents uh, are figuring, well, if you, if if you don't even have a better chance at a better job, and you're not getting education, oh, but we're learning how to demonstrate. Yeah. we're out there practicing the truth. And we have our marching orders here. And this is more fun. This is more fun than studying and you know and thinking for ourselves. So we'll, we'll avoid that. Yeah, well, you, you use a great word because it's a good segue, trustworthiness. Because this is what Vivek Murthy is saying. He said, you've got to trust us. And actually, skip one clip and go to the next one. Murthy said that getting tech companies, if you can find that one, I'm going to skip one. But it, you, it's a key word, Dr. Paul, it's trust. Murthy, the Surgeon General, said getting tech companies to disclose, disclose harms is a good goal, but that a Surgeon General's warning has specific advantages. So he's saying it's better that I'm warning than they do. Many people know about the Surgeon General's warning. They've seen them on alcohol bottles or tobacco products, he said. I think our office has a long history of being trusted on issues related to public health. Trusted. Put on the next clip. This is the same Vivek Murthy during COVID. The Surgeon General calls on big tech to turn over COVID-19 misinformation data. By misinformation data, he's talking about and in fact, we have a clip of him, Dr. Paul. Uh, at the time, this is when he, this is when he released this report. Uh, what was that date on there? I don't know if we can go back and see. It's in 20, uh, 2021, I think it was. Yeah, 2021, July of 2021, Dr. Paul. Here's what Murthy, who says that he has a high degree of credibility, put on your, your ear. This is what he was talking about back then about COVID. Today, I issued a Surgeon General's advisory on the dangers of health misinformation. Surgeon General advisories are reserved for urgent public health threats. And while those threats have often been related to what we eat, drink, and smoke, 
Today, we live in a world where misinformation poses an imminent and insidious threat to our nation's health. Health misinformation is false, inaccurate, or misleading information about health, according to the best evidence at the time. And while it often appears innocuous on social media apps, on retail sites, or search engines, the truth is that misinformation takes away our freedom to make informed decisions about our health and the health of our loved ones. During the COVID-19 pandemic, health misinformation has led people to resist wearing masks in high-risk settings. It's led them to turn down proven treatments and to choose not to get vaccinated. This has led to avoidable illnesses and death. Like literally everything he said was false <laughs> at the time. It, it, this misinformation led people to resist wearing masks. Okay, now we know they don't Where work. Where did misinformation come from? <laughs> yeah. From him, from him. He's a purveyor. This is classic. He's a purveyor of misinformation, but he's back telling us that he's going to protect us again from misinformation. You know, this article we were quoting from uh, quoted a couple senators because there were some, com some complaints from two senators. There's uh, a Republican, Marsha Blackburn, and, and Democrat Richard Blumenthal. Yeah. They're bipartisan, so that makes us all happy. It's better for democracy. <laughs> and these two key senators, they have their own bill. So they were. <clears throat> this was their chance to get on there. Maybe because they wanted more regulations and more control. So why didn't they jump on it? Oh, well, it wouldn't be their bandwagon. Yeah. So the two senators supporting kids' online safety, Blackburn and Blumenthal jumped on Murthy's op-ed to push their own legislation. They called for the passage of their Kids Online Safety Act. Well, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> to force, oh, oh, that's when it gets bad. To force tech platforms to prevent the spread of harmful content online. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we'll hire these guys. They're, they've been practicing for a long time, forcing harmful content, which is, has been introduced multiple times, but never gone to a floor vote. Well, I good, but this other trash gets to the floor. Yeah. So, but this, this so is- so classic. Uh, you, I, 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 don't, I don't imagine there's a lot of people say, Oh yeah, we don't like that, and you're right. We need something that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, to me, it doesn't make more sense, and you're doing something you shouldn't even be trying to yeah. do because you're incapable. <laughs> it just shows they're not, they're not going away. They they <laughs> love this power over us. So, anyway, I'm going to close out. If I think we, if you think we've covered everything, and I'm just going to do our last clip here to remind everyone: get your tickets for the Liberty Platform. Uh, we've got great speakers. They're lining up as we speak. I will put. Put that last clip on just so you get a look at what we're all about. We are that yellow flower trying to rise out of that hot, miserable concrete. That's our goal in one photo here. It's going to be great speakers. It's going to be a great day. I, will, I forgot to put links in before the show, but right after the show's over, I'll put links into this and to apply for being a Ron Paul Scholar. People who are students are going to want to do that. It's a great program as well. I'll put the links in, get more info and click on it and we look forward to seeing you. Dr. Paul, over very, to you. Very good. You know, we've been talking about uh, how to make it safe for the patients and the people on the various things that the government does. And, uh, and so they want to use labels and they say, well, we label the tobacco and all these other things and it hasn't done much good, but nevertheless labeled. But that's what government's in the business of there. If, if they want something done, they label. And sometimes there is a commercial uh, reason for this. You label your opponent's, uh, <laughs> uh, your opponent's uh, product and, uh, and, and that will satisfy them. But uh, the, the principle is what I want to say a few words about. And that is uh, most of the arguments for doing all of this, vaccines, everything, is to keep the people safe. Now, who's against safety? I'm very much for safety, and I'm very sensitive to that. But the big question is, who's responsible? Is it the politicians? Is it the dictators? Is it the drug companies? It's, is it the military industrial complex? And who's to take care of safety? Because everybody is for safety. But almost, I bet you, if you did a polling and ask an open-ended question about, is, does the government have a responsibility to keep the people safe. And of course, absolutely, we have to be safe. We have to have people protecting our borders so nobody invades us. We have to have all these things to make the people safe. And of course, it, it, it doesn't work. And safety is something different than that. People can voluntarily get together. And in the beginning of time, in the beginning of our country, 
they had, it wasn't like when they went out and uh, uh, went, uh, developed and, and moved into the West, the settlers, you know, were kept safe, but they were in charge, of, they were in charge of their safety. So this whole idea that governments can make us safe, the government should make us work for our freedom, to protect our liberty, to make our own decisions with, that uh, would keep us safe. And that principle has been essentially lost. There's no place in the Constitution that says, number one issue is keep the people safe, safe from sickness and injuries and wars and all these things. It doesn't work that way because the responsibility should be on the people. That's what it would be like in a free society. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.